Hi, and uh, welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. This is going to be uh, Let's Play Dark Souls episode 11. Um, what I'm doing right now is I am uh, just using up these um, these souls that I have in my inventory so I can try to level up as high as I can. Really just trying to get that vitality and uh, dexterity up. So uh, I put two points into uh, dex. And that's as high as I could go. So now we're going to head on out. Take care of a few enemies. And uh, what's going to happen up here is uh, I'm going to get invaded by a uh, dark spirit. And uh, we're going to have to fight that dark spirit. So uh, it's actually a really easy fight, especially if you uh, have a weapon for it, which I do for now. Uh, buying the crystal sword was a really good option uh, but as we all know eventually the crystal sword uh, will break the more you use it so there's that I am just killing the, uh, the little flies uh, because I don't want to have more damage than I need coming in. Uh, I am suffering from some poison damage right now. Because that's pretty much what this area is. is just a, a whole bunch of poison damage. So... i hit up the bonfire again just to get that poison dot off me without uh, spending any resources to do it. And I did just grab a uh, soul item, so uh, I think what needs to be done is that needs to be used. And we are... Uh, basically what we're doing right now is... Um, we're getting... We're... we're uh, Restoring our humanity, that way we can get invaded by the Dark Spirit. This Dark Spirit in particular, when you kill it, uh, you get to have it help you out in the Quelug, uh fight. So, uh, that... There it is. Dark Spirit Maneater Mildred. So, there's another large soul item. There she is, nice easy dodge, and she's dead. About that easy. It's really not that hard of a fight. Um, she can be parried too if you decide to go that route. Uh, the only reason I'm even having a shield right now is because it's the Grass Crest Shield. And that uh, buffs up my um, stamina regeneration, so I'm able to. I'm able to just. Uh, have that on my back, and I get the, the benefits of having that. Moving right along, uh, I'm gonna pick this item up. We got a large Titanite shard. Good upgrade uh, material. Um, I was considering it the other day, and um, I feel like what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start migrating away from the Crystal Sword because I know it's gonna break soon. And uh, I think I'm gonna start upgrading my hand axe until I get um, a Black Knight weapon. Not sure when that will happen. I do know of a place where I can uh, potentially farm the Black Knights. Uh, or not farm them, but I get a couple more chances. So I'll probably go there and uh, I'll try to get a Black Knight weapon. But uh, if I can't get the Black Knight weapon, then I'm going to go ahead and keep leveling up the, uh, the axe that I started the game off with. So this is uh, the Quelog, uh boss fight. If you have your humanity restored, you're able to um, summon Mildred. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to summon Mildred. Um, I'll take any help I can get in all these boss fights. Uh, some people like to do them, you know, just just them. This boss is one of those bosses you can do that on, and that's how I did it my first time through. But um, having Maneater Mildred there to be able to tank this boss uh, is a boon. And yes, I know. Uh, Mildred is basically just wearing underwear, the wooden shield. She's basically, you know, just completely naked. But uh, for whatever reason, Mildred has very good resistances and she can handle this uh, pretty well. You can actually, she can actually beat the whole fight for you. And you don't have to <laughs> even do anything if you don't want to. But... Uh... I'm going to skip the cutscene, uh, just because, um, this isn't exactly a walkthrough, this is kind of a playthrough, so, I'm just going to get right into it and play, because that's what a playthrough is, you play. One great thing about, uh, Dark Souls, uh, the music. Yeah, that's basically her one of her biggest attacks there is that sword swing and then she uh, spits out that lava at you. I don't know why, but a majority of this fight she was right in that corner. A little bit annoying, I'm not gonna lie. That was pretty much it. Chaos Witch Quaylog is uh, dead. Essentially what that means is I get to progress now, right on up these stairs, and uh, next room I believe is uh, where I can ring the second bell. And we all know what the second bell does. And in case you don't know, uh, it opens up uh, Sen's Fortress. And that will be uh, where we go next, because uh, from there you get to go to Ann Arwando. Interesting the usage of those um, giants, how it all relates to um, what you're doing. Oh yeah, and I made a mistake uh, coming up here. Um, A mistake I didn't know how to fix, and so I did something I didn't do in my Twitch playthrough, and uh, you'll see. That's a secret door, obviously. Um, I answered the wrong thing there because I was just trying to buzz through his dialogue. Yeah, so that was my mistake. So anyway, when you kill those guys, that's what happens. Uh, those those things come at you, and they can really mess you up fast. So. 
leveling up a little bit more, getting that dex up, and getting the health up. I didn't do a whole lot of cutting uh, in this particular playthrough. What I did do uh, for what I'm doing here is I just fast forwarded a few of the uh, the more boring parts, but So we're going to venture on into the uh, the lava area now, the next area. And uh, in here, there's going to be another bonfire right there. So we'll, we'll get that, the demon ruins. Here we are. Make sure we activate that bonfire. And honestly, one of the next things we need to do um, is we're going to have to go into the catacombs real soon here and get that uh, bonfire aesthetic thing that you can get that will um, level up your bonfires. That way we can, uh, we can spend humanity, level up our bonfires, and uh, just have them all set. Cause it kind of stinks when you sit when you uh, sit at a bonfire and then you only get five Estus. I mean, yeah, that's probably a get good issue, and I'm probably not getting good enough. But for this, uh, this is going to be another boss fight. For this boss fight, I'm going to um, I'm going to use a, a different strat than I used in my Twitch playthrough. For my Twitch playthrough, basically what, what happened was I ended up stumbling onto a stream where uh, another new guy uh, that hadn't played before was playing. He was on this particular part, and I did this before I started streaming. And he was fighting this boss, and he fought it in this weird way, and I actually did it on stream the same way that guy did. And it turned out it was actually a harder way to fight it, but it was more legit, I guess you could call it. This particular strat... I'm going to use um, for this fight is the more uh, agreed upon strat. So, see, I grabbed those clothes there. Now he's awake, so I gotta get out of his way. This strat is the agreed upon strat that most, uh, most of the speedrunners use and all that stuff. If they even do this fight, if they have to. Uh, but. Essentially, it, it just makes it. <laughs> it's honestly, it feels like it's cheesing the fight, but it makes it so easy when you do the strat I'm about to do. Most of you uh, Dark Souls players out there will probably know this strat. Uh, I didn't uh, until I ended up kind of stumbling onto it. I think it was, uh, I was looking through, uh, Reddit or something, and I found it. I was like, whoa, that's really cool. A couple of YouTubers have, uh, shown this one too. But basically, this is it. He does that. And then all you gotta do is, uh, just attack this hand here. And then that's it. That's the whole fight. You literally take zero damage from that fight if you do it like that. It's pretty much like free souls. It's 
So what happens is you kill that boss, and then uh, the lava sort of dries up, because he's like the source of it or something like that. So you get some humanity, you get some souls. Get a homeward bone just in case you need to use it. Which, I used it because I didn't feel like running. I should have honestly like never used any of the bonfires coming in to here. And I should have kept the one in um, Blight Town open. But I didn't. That's what you should do if you do this, guys. Uh, if you're confident in your, in your skills on this game. What you should do is, um, you know, just keep the, the Blight Town bonfire activated. Don't use any bonfires after Quillog. Just light them. And then when you beat this boss, all you gotta do is Homeward Bone, and it'll bring you all the way to Blight Town. So, basically now I have to run all the way back to Blight Town. And eventually, um, you know, make, make my way all the way up to Firelink. So. so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, go through the Quaylog uh, boss fight area and uh, yeah, just keep making my way up. And uh, about the time we hit Blight Town, I'm probably going to just fast forward the footage. Uh, because I know I die. Pretty sure I die once. Oh, and uh, this, this particular video and the next probably two videos are going to be basically pre recorded with no audio, and I'm going to be recording audio over them. Just like uh, this one and the last two before it. So. Um, yeah, sorry in advance, it's not more live-like. Uh, but after those videos, I will be doing my recordings with my mic on in real time. So you'll be able to hear my reactions to, uh, you know, stupid deaths and things like that. I think there I tried the Falchion, and I didn't like the damage, so I swapped it out immediately for the Battle Axe. But the Crystal Sword's pretty much, pretty much done, so... It's sad, because that, that sword pretty much carried me through a lot of the content, but I gotta move on. So up we go, up to the uh, the elevator here, and I'm pretty sure this is where I die. Yeah, so I die there. <laughs> right back at the bonfire, gotta make my way all the way back up. To the elevator again. That elevator is, is so bad. It's like sitting there, where do I go? Where do I go? Yep, check where you didn't check. There you go. Good job. One all the way up. Um, there's got those guys that shoot the toxic arrows there. Um, basically what I'm doing here is I'm just going to kill them. They honestly, they need to die, so. Getting that done. Died again. Gonna go back up. The cool thing about this is when you kill those toxic arrow shooting guys, they don't come back, so uh, that's that's pretty nice. So you can take your time with this. Uh, for me, 
I have to take my time with certain things in this game or else uh, I get super duper irritated with it and uh, you know it doesn't make any sense for me to not take my time with it so So my souls are down there, but I have to kill these dogs first. The thing about the dogs, you hit them with the arrow, right? They run straight to the ladder and stay there. So you can hit them with the arrow once, and then readjust your aim, and you can basically cheese the dogs to death. Just like that. Getting a little sketchy there, but uh, everything's fine. Of course, that fly flies right out of my reach. Like a little D-bag. More of these dogs. They are so irritating because, like, they just can dodge anything. And they have, like, this weird off attack where they can, they can hit you faster than you can attack. So I just got the Firekeeper Soul. That's the whole reason why you come down here, really, uh, is to get that. Alright, so I got that trolley little fly out of the way. <clears throat> now it's time to start uh, making my way um, back to Firelink Shrine. I know I didn't come close to grabbing all the items in Blight Town, but to be honest, the build I'm running, most of those items don't matter to my build anyway. Which I am running a quality build. So. That's basically strength and dexterity and then um, health. Use the humanity to get a max heal real fast. I don't know why I came back down here, but basically I just need to go up. Up, up, up. Up and away, out of Blight Town.
Oh, a chest I didn't find. How about that? The key to New Andar Londo. Nice. So that'll make a shortcut uh, available to Andar Londo, which I will probably be using that to get to Firelink. get that backstab. I'm trying to get that backstab is like pulling teeth. <laughs> I got I just gotta two hand it. It's like the only way I'm gonna get a good backstab on these guys. Now I've made it harder on myself, so that'd be nice. So basically what I need to do now is use the iframes um, from the backstabs in order to get these guys separated. Like that. There. Now I'm doing it right. I'm gonna two hand it. Get a get a higher uh, backstab. All they drop is poop, so I'm probably not going to pick that up. There's no need for that unless it's like PvP, and even still that's weird. So the shortcut is over here. You go and you unlock this door. And you get uh, your shortcut to new Londo Ruins. I'm not going to go into the Londo Ruins just yet. Um, I'm going to go in here and use the elevator. So that effectively unlocks the shortcut. And we are back at Firelink. <clears throat> so that's gonna, uh... Well, first I'm going to um, go back here, over here, and I think I'm going to upgrade my Estus. She can't speak because that dude uh, invaded her or something. That's what happened. I don't know. We'll figure it out in, uh, in Orlando. But anyway, um, that's going to wrap up uh, this episode of Let's Play Dark Souls Remastered. Um, Really appreciate you sticking through it and uh, hanging out with me while I do this. I die a lot. Um, if you found me without being a subscriber, please consider subscribing. That helps out my channel a lot. Uh, hit the like button if you like the video. That also helps. And uh, take care.